Because let me tell you something, life is a fight. Who's discovered that? Who knows it's a fight to get the church going? Who knows it's that? You can't just plant churches, that's a fight. You can't just disciple people, that's a fight. You want to lead people, that's a fight. You want to build a family, that's a fight. You want to, have, you want to stay married, that's a fight. <laughs> Come on. Come on, sisters, is it a fight? Come on. It's a fight. It's a, it's a fight. A fight to raise good kids. Come on. A fight to bring... It's, it, you know, it's, a, it's one thing to fill a room with people. It's another thing to make them into disciples of Jesus, isn't it? Someone that can actually minister. Someone who knows their superpower. No, someone that you can drop into anywhere and they can bring the presence and the power and the joy and the hope of our Saviour into a situation. Hey? That isn't intimidated by a thing. But we've got to work on that. Okay? Part of the problem is this. In all my discipleship of people, and that's really what I now do, I really just disciple people. And I'm always discipling a new Christian, I'm always discipling some super pastor or prophet person. And I keep myself connected to both ends of it. Because competency is what we really need to learn. Tell you what, there, you, many of you are called, in fact I could probably say all of you, I could line you each and every up one of them. And we're not going to do that, but I could name what you're called to do. But there is competencies that needs to be built. You might be called to do it, like some, of, like some of you boys, my goodness me, probably might be pretty good at football, maybe pretty good at lifting stuff. But you have that, and I'm not being offensive or anything like that, but you have that genetically. Is, is, is that fair? You know? Some of you girls are stronger than me. They're not. Uh, Beautiful and strong. But, but you know what? That's one thing. But you, but you know what? If you actually to, to just say, man, you could probably go in the Olympics at something, one of those power events or do something like that. And you go, yeah, I probably could. And then show up in Moscow. Well, we might not be going to Moscow anymore. <laughs> hey, that's, who knows what's going to happen with that. Or go to the next Olympics where that's going to be on the planet. And if you just show up, Without, no matter, even if you genetically, like someone said, you could do this. You've got, the, you've got the ability to do it. But if you've done no training, no preparation, you're going you're gonna to humiliate yourself. And so many people do that in the kingdom, especially in ministry and leadership. They have a heart and desire to do it, but they're not doing the prep to really bring it when you've got to bring it. Is that true, Pastor? Amen. Come on. So you've got to be able to learn that. So what we're going to do, so we're going to look at, we're going to look at the life of David over the next couple of messages that I get to do. And I'm really honoured to do that. Is that cool? Because I know of no one who I've found that can do a fight better than David. True? He can fight. Because it, it, it says, we, we'll read some Bible for sort of religious people, okay? It says, 1 Timothy, let me just start it off. He's, and when I looked at it, 1 Timothy chapter 6 says, fight the good fight of faith to lay hold of eternal life. To lay hold of eternal life. Let me tell you something. If you're who's born again, spirit filled, cast out demon, raise the dead, put your hand up right now. There's four of us. Come on, who's born again in this room? Who knows the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Okay, that means you've got eternal life. Starts now. We're not waiting to get to heaven. We're getting ready for heaven. In fact, in lots of ways, we're bringing down heaven right now and we're, and we're releasing that. So we've got to know that and see... You got to, in Matthew chapter 11, I'm just giving you a premise. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, it says this. From the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent. Come on, girls. The violent. Take it by force. Oh, come on, say that word. Force. force. Do you believe me? Right now, right now, like never before, the church has got to rise up and be a force. Come on, we've got to rise up and be a force. We can't get shut down by, and I'm not going all of that, but I mean, ooh, it frustrates me so much. It's like, uh, it's like, like, why aren't we healing COVID? I'll just talk to the elephant in the room, like, okay. <laughs> why, 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 now you get vaccinated. I'm not, I'm not here to 
go down all those tracks. That's craziness. But I am saying, if people are sick, why aren't they coming to us? That used to be the thing, wasn't it? If people were poor, why aren't they coming to us? If people aren't needed an education, why aren't they coming to us? Come on. The church is the hope of the world. Isn't that true? So, but that's going to be a fight. Do you understand that? And we have to, I, I believe that we have to prove that we are worthy of the fight. So let's look at the story of David. Is that cool? So I want you to turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. My driver, Malu. Stand up, Malu, I'm going to get you. See, Marlo, let me tell you something. God is restoring. God is creating. God is filling you with hope. God, you should have been out here. You've got a white T-shirt on. It's like, you're great. But I tell you what, you are pastoral. You are a shepherd to people. And I'm going to say what I said in the car so that other people can hear it and be witness to it. And we might get the prophet over there to declare something over you. Is that you're going to be, you're going to be blessed beyond what you ever knew before. The next season of your life is going to be the most wonderful, most breathtaking to yourself. You will wake up in the morning going, Father, how did I ever get here? How did I ever do this? You're going to be like Moses. Where did this, all, all these people around me, where did they come from? Because you're going to be such a lover of people that you're going to be a magnet to them. God's going to put people on your heart and because you're going to be, you are a heart man more than a head man. And because of your compassion and because of your care and because of your brokenness, you're now going to, God is going to release the a shepherd's heart over you to gather people and to help people and to heal people and you are going to be, your superpower is going to be, you're going to heal the broken hearted in Jesus' name. You're going to heal the broken hearted in Jesus' name. Come on. <laughs> Jesus' name. Whoa. You got a broken heart? Go over there. Okay, you ready? Oh, I'm having fun. Shandai. Here we go. Now, just to set the scene, of course, 1, 1 Samuel chapter 17 is, of course, where David beats Goliath, okay? But we're not going to talk about that. Because you don't get to fight Goliath before a whole lot of things. And that's what I want to pick it up on. Remember, David, is, and then they go into kind of, you know, like, I'm a Bible college principal, hey, you know. It's like, it, David, does, David, they say, was maybe illegitimate. Didn't look like his brothers. Was an embarrassment to the family. You know, he was that person. You know, he was, you know, they, they sent him out to be a shepherd as a little boy, hoping that something would happen to him. But it never seemed to happen to him. And then they send him off with like cheese and bread to a servant. And even his brothers, they just do not like this guy. He's an embarrassment to the family and they just, they just, he, he has suffered rejection his entire life. Okay. And then he walks in and all of a sudden he sees Goliath making fun of everybody and everybody freaking out like coronavirus, <laughs> like it's Putin. Like it's like some other thing, you know, whatever the problem, big bill, bad um, medical diagnosis, giants come in all sorts of forms and shapes, is that true? Yeah. Marriage breakdown, crazy kids, whatever that thing. See, there's one thing about the Philistines when you look at them, Philistines were at least an enemy that would get up in your face and take you on like uh, up in your grill kind of thing, you know what I mean? Like, what are you going to do about me? Do you know those sort of problems you, that we have? Those sort of problems. That's what that's... And he walks into this situation where everybody's been intimidated and everybody's fearful of what's going on. So he finds out, what do you do if you kill that guy? And then he finds out there's a reward. Now that really, you know, you get, you get tax-free income... 
and a princess. Come on. Who wants to get in a fight? So this is what he says. So somehow the favor and the confidence that he has, and it's interesting because, and we're going to unpack it, but David is now, see your superpower, your gift, your call will bring you, the prophet says, it will bring you before great men. So he gets this opportunity now to speak to the king. And this is where we're going to pick it up, this conversation. It says in verse 31, Now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul who sent for him. And then David said to Saul, Let no, listen to this. <laughs> listen to this, Milo. Let no man's heart fail him because of him. The brokenhearted. Your servant will go out and fight this with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, But you're not able to go up against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. This guy's got prep. This guy's got competency. Do you know, uh, side note, I'm always trying to work with people with this. Do you know you could become an expert at something if you'll put 10,000 hours into it? 10,000 hours at something and you can become, I mean, like PhD, Tiger Woods, Serena Williams, those sort of thing. You, 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 you could, um, a Tom Brady, you could become that. That's 10,000 hours. It's interesting, see, Roger Federer is starting to come down in tennis, I know. Who knows who Roger is? Okay, so what is it? 14 Grand Slams. I did some calcs on it. I did some things on him. R Roger hit about 10,000 hours at about 22. 10,000 hours looks like this. Eight hours a day, seven days a week for three and a half years. That's all it is. Let me throw you the other way. So he's done that by the time he's 20. Now when you play him at 35... He's done 32,000 hours at Grand Slam level. Mm. That's why you only beat him if he lets you. <laughs> come on, guys, come on. You know what? Do you, do you know how long? If, so if the average Christian does two hours of church or ministry a week, two hours. Now I know. You get 10,000 hours when you're about 70. By the time you're of any use, you're starting to forget whatever you know. <laughs> so this is what, see, this is what Saul is saying to David. Like, you, you're going to step onto the field with someone that's done prep. Yeah. Come on. But this is what David says. He goes, I'm, he's not, I can't understand this. He says, but David said to him, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took the lamb... Out of the flock, I went after it and struck it. I delivered, the, I, I delivered the lamb out of its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant, listen to this. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who has delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. So, so Saul said to David, go. Let me tell you something. You know what the last words that Jesus said to us was? Go. 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 See, we've got to understand the first fight. Let me tell you something. The first fight you are ever going to be in is for yourself. And you've got to get that. You've got to, you, let, it, see, and let me just unpack this. We've got, to, we've got to learn how to do with our lions and our bears. We've got to learn the things that were assigned to us to kill us, destroy us, take us out. We've got to use them to increase us. See, sons, it's another message, but let me see something. The disciples of Jesus, those that are really called, you, like, guess what? 
your adversity will always create something in you. Is that true? Come on. When you go through, has anybody been through any pain here? Anybody go through any loss? Anybody been any there? Like, you know, heartache, trial, tribulation, discouragement, betrayal. Anybody been, am I talking to the right group? Has anybody been through that? Well, that's awesome. Because that has brought you to put you in that chair today. You've got to understand. Well, hopefully it has. Hopefully it has. See, let me look at this. See, the first thing he says is bears. <laughs> bears, bears hibernate. I, let me unpack this. Bears are the things that sit in us waiting to be awoken. Our anger. Our anxiety. You know, you're fine until someone touches some area in your life and then all of a sudden now you're starting to get all upset. Uh, you, you, you know what? As soon as someone can upset you, they've got control of you. See, what, a, what awakens you, what triggers you, what triggers your anger, what triggers your insecurity? Come on. If you're going to be a leader, you can't. Man, the church is full of insecure leaders that are worried about people rising up, worried about people, you know, what are they going to do? Are they going to leave? Are they going to stay? Let me tell you something. David was never worried whether people came to him or left him. And you see, you see in in Saul's, the previous king, he was always freak out, didn't he, Bishop, about people leaving him, and he ends up suiciding. David was always most concerned, even though he had a few wobbly bits, that that about the Lord, and his focus was on the worship and the and the and raising up the name and the testimony of the Lord. Is that true? And the people did everything they could to keep him alive. The people did. So you got to, are, are you hearing me? See, what do you like when people, when, you know, what's it going to take to, you know, what do you, does your anger explode? Do you go into a rage? The anger, oh, oh, hopefully you're taking notes so you can record this or whatever, but it, it's, it, let me tell you something like this. The anger of man, James says, never, say never, never, never produces the righteousness of God. What about your insecurity? What if people get promoted above you? What if people ignore you? What if people uh, overlook you? What if, what if you do something great but no one notices? What, what do you like? What are you insecure about? Do you, when you compare yourself, that's which is the dumbest thing ever to do. You know, come on, I'm talking to someone. You've got to learn how to fight that. And what are you going to do about that? Because I know this from a skinny white bald guy that the, you, you have to fight insecurity your entire life. But who knows, do you know what I think David was saying? You know what, I know, isn't it interesting? Who knows, when you know how to solve a problem, the problem's no longer a problem. Is that true? Once you figure out how to kill lions or bears, it's like, now I know, what to, now I know why I get angry, and now I don't get angry anymore. Come on, I, can, I, I, get, I get tempted to. <laughs> Not looking at no one. I get tempted to get angry. I get tempted to get insecure. I get tempted to. But temptation does not equal identity. Somebody, someone needs to hear that. See, because the enemy tells you what we get tempted with and to look at our behavior and say, that's what you are. You're just an angry person or you're an insecure person. Let me tell you something about temptation. Jesus was tempted in all things. Come on. Get without sin. So it's not about what you get what you get tempted with doesn't reveal who you are. It just reveals the strategy of what the the enemy is trying to identify you as, but that's not who you are in Jesus' name. Father, I just pray that Lord, that's broken a lie off people right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray, Lord, that people that have struggled with internal turmoil, Father, right now would know your peace and your goodness and your joy in Jesus' name. Amen. See, we've got to do that. We've got to learn how to do that. See, what's your forgiveness level like? What's your jealousy like? What's your bitterness like? No nudging anyone. But you know, I'm talking, come on. I want you to become a disciple of Jesus. I want, can you see how all these things take us out in ministry? Or they cap us. 
of what God really wants to do. When you look at lions, oh man, this is where I really want to go to. See, lions is what rules you. That's what they represent, don't they? And sometimes it's even our family, our family line, our family traits. We, sometimes we've got to get, you know, the lies. What are the lies that I believe? What are the fears that I believe? What are the addictions that rule my life? We need to not stop and get rid of that and deal with that. And if you need to go get counseling, if you need to go get deliverance, if you need to go get, see a therapist, if you need to go and figure it out, go and figure it out. Come on. Turn to your neighbor and say, just figure it out. <laughs> Let's just deal with this thing, hey. Let's just deal with this. Imagine if, you know, imagine, imagine the church where no one would, it was just almost impossible to offend people. Because they're just so secure, it's like, that's cute. You know, it's like, you know, can you imagine what that's like? When you can be there. When you're no longer affected by the things of your family. Man, my dad was born in prison. It was violence in our family. Just as well I'm not big. Like, look at my ears. But it's like, you know, like, um, it was violent. But see, I can't use that as an excuse anymore. Is that true? Because I've got, my now, now I'm not part of the Newmans. I'm part of the kingdoms. Is that true? And I can't use that as an excuse anyway. Oh, my dad was this and my mum was this, so I didn't get that. That's what's trying to rule me. Is that true? And I can't let that anymore because now I've said, I came to an altar one day and I bowed my knees and I said, Lord Jesus, you are now my Lord and my Saviour. Is that true? Now he's the Lord and now he has the say. And if he says that I'm, that I'm kind, that I'm generous, that I'm full of joy, that I'm long-suffering, that I can forgive, well, then that's the truth about me. Is that true? And that's what needs to rule in our world. See, if it's money, as poverty ruled your life, that needs to be broken. Come on. Like, I'm so excited. I can see that. Who could see that in the bishop? Poverty is broken off him. He just talks money. In, his, in fact, I could really... Oh, oh, we just have another word for you and your, and your, and your princess here. It's like, who, who reckons we should get the bishop, hey? This is it. Is this person? It's like, it's like, yeah. It's like, you know, I see you like Joseph. This man that's, and right now, right now is a season for you to prep for people. In fact, your wisdom and your insight in the season that you are in, in your church and your ministry and all the influence that you have, you're actually getting people ready for some difficulty that's going to come. That sounds very promising, doesn't it? But the thing is that that very thing, that very thing of lack and people going through some crazy stuff elevated Joseph. And you're going to be able to feed people and fund people and do things. And even the world is going to come to you to find out how to get breakthrough in Jesus' name. You are a Joseph. You are a Joseph. You have insight. You have wisdom. You have strategies. God, you just think it's normal, but that's actually your superpower. God's called you to rule, not to lead. He's called you to make provision for the kingdom. And God's called you to do something quite outstanding in this nation in order to break poverty off people in Jesus' name. You're going to break poverty. Poverty is your enemy and you're going to crush it in Jesus' name. There'll be, you watch it as you go. Poor people will, they will, they will come to you, but they will leave with you with a sense, not just with money, but the ability to make wealth. That's what you're going to impart to people in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to get it prayed for by you at the end of this meeting in Jesus' name. We have the brokenhearted in this aisle. Pastor. The bishop's going to be here with all the poor people who want money. And we'll see what happens in this aisle. In Jesus' name. Is that good? So you've got to fight. And you know what? It might take you a few, it might take you a few weeks or a few years to get through you know, maybe some of your family stuff. Maybe some of your fear of money stuff. Maybe, maybe the fear of, you know, maybe there's unemployment in your background. I don't know. But I care. And I care enough to, to preach at you until you get so sick of the situation that you're at that you want to actually get up and fight and wrestle to the ground whatever this lion and bear is. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Why, why, so David said, when this thing tried to steal off me, the thing that I was responsible for, he says, I chased it down. Grabbed it, but this is not, this is a 14 year old boy against a real lion, not just a little, you know, the paddle pop lion or, you know, Humphrey B. Bear, although your generation probably doesn't know that. Either. But it's not like that. It's not like this fuzzy, this, this is the thing that will tear your limb from limb. In fact, 
He was sent out there to look after the sheep so that one of those things would kill him. So we've got to get into this fight for yourself. See, when David said, I could kill him, it sounds like arrogance, but I believe it was confidence. See, he even had to fight through his own brothers and his own thing like that, where he was rejected and judged by his brothers. Then in the next message, we're going to see what happens, what he does with that. See, let me, because I want to pray for some more people. Is that okay? Let me tell you something, just to, just to sort of stitch this up a little bit. Jesus fought for you, so you should fight for you. Come on. I reckon you've got a bit of fight in you. Why, why, come on. Why, uh, why be limited by your past or how, what people have, or how people have treated you or by circumstances? Come on. What does God say about you? And don't just take it. Start to live it out in Jesus' name. Come on. Start to stand up and fight for yourself. Don't think that anyone else... Is, let me tell you something. We're all waiting for someone else to do it for us and it cannot be done. Praise God because you, and we'll, you'll, you'll see that, you know what, once a person learns how to do this, I believe you truly, truly are equipped for ministry. I got once to sit down in a meeting with a guy called Jim Wallace who wrote the Australian, yeah, wrote the Australian, uh, what was it, the policy on anti-terrorism. He's a, he rounds the Australian SAS. He can kill you with his thumb. Okay. Extremely ninja-like soldier. He'd been stationed all over the world in really crazy situations. And I asked him about church leadership. What did he think? And he goes, you know what, Muzz? It's so funny. Even in the military, we can see the guys, even in the first two weeks in the leadership stream, we can see the guys that can lead. We see in the church... We sit, you know when those, someone gets saved and we think, man, the call of God is on their life. <laughs> and then we punch them up and they leapfrog a few levels and lose competency. They never get to get competency. And all of a sudden a lion jumps up. <laughs> Their insecurity jumps and they've never learned how to kill that. <laughs> someone upsets them and they get angry and they react. Yeah. They know how to do that. They don't know how to put chairs out. Don't know how to do car park. Don't know how to show up early and do music, what it takes. Don't know, don't know how to greet people. Don't know how to run a small group. Man, I've met pastors that, like, they, they've leapfrogged into that position and now they don't know why there's all this chaos and all this stuff around them. And it's because they've never learned how to do the basics very well. Come on. Is that true? Come on. And that's what he says. He says, that's why when I walk into a room with these guys, they stand up. Because I have done everything that they have done to a level of competency where I go up. And now they, I stand in the room and they know I can do it better than them. Now, that's not a superior thing. That's he's done his 10,000 hours as a soldier. See, what, what if you actually really ramped it up, your life with Jesus, what he's saying to you? What if you really learn like this? It's basically this. To be a good disciple of Jesus is this. Knowing, or it's, let me say this. It's knowing the right thing to do. Knowing the right thing to do. Amen. Doing the right thing. The right way. Come on. At the right time. With the right spirit. That's what a disciple does. Is that true? That's what a minister, that's what a leader does. That's what they do. Do you want me to say those all again for those taking the notes? Or you with the van? You've got to know what to do. 
You know, you've got to do the right thing. You've got to know, well, what was the other thing? Yeah, that's one of them. Let me go, let me go, let me refile my mind so I've got my slide in front of me. I've got to do it. I've got to know how to do it. I've got to know when to do it. And I've got to know what spirit to do it in. Uh Uh-oh, I heard that. (laughs) Come on. What is it? What's the lion and bear that's chasing you around your lounge room right now? What's your patience like? Come on. What's your ability to talk, have the difficult conversation like? Oh, my goodness me. What, 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 are you able to, like, confront properly? Father, properly. Mother, properly. Lead, properly. Come on. This is a leadership summit, isn't it? That's what we're talking about. And see, in order to do that, because you know what people really want? People really want to see that God is with us. True? Come on. They want to see that God is with you. They want to see that. It's very difficult to see that while you lose your temper all the time. Is that true? Is that true? Well, and you're a rat bag, you know. You can't be trusted or you're a gossip or you lie or you do all these things. They said, come on. Come on. We're going to step this right up. Let me tell you something. You know, I was, I was just so blown away by the presence and your ability to bring something. Do you know you all bring something when you step into this room? Yeah. Thinking, man, you shouldn't be keeping this to yourselves. No one even plant churches. You should be planting churches. <laughs> but you need to take what you've got in this room and you need to share it with the rest of the world. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. You've got to do it. Because God, let me tell you something, God has blessed you Amen. to do it. See, what is the, what is the, let me, let, let, give me a shortcut to the whole thing, really. What's joyful you like? Just have a practice, turn to your neighbor outside, go, just give him a smile, you know. You mightn't have smiled at her all night, but smile at her tonight, eh? Just, uh, just practice. Did you, you smile, yeah, you're you smiling, you're smiling. Yeah. <laughs> a, t- turn the other way and let's have another practice, a little smile. See, that's actually what born again you actually looks like. Let me, let, me t- let me prove it to you. It's very simple. Born again you is joyful you. Wow. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me show you something. Theologically, I can prove it. It's like this. When was the last time you sinned? Even got, even got tempted when you were joyful. Can I have a show of hands? When was the last time that happened? It doesn't happen, does it? Okay, because I can show you it the other way. I'll show you the other way, linearly. It's like this. <laughs> it, let me tell you something. If you are tired, sad, lonely, and hungry, you're going to sin. <laughs> Is that good? Yeah, hungry was the tip over. Look, look, when did, when did Satan, when did, calm down, when did Satan tempt Jesus in the wilderness when he was hungry? Yeah, tired, sad, and alone, but not sad. Joy will release your superpower. Joy, see, that's what, in all of your fight, what you're really trying, what that whole thing is about is learning to be joyful no matter what comes at you. Is learning to be an overcomer no matter what comes at you. Because, and learning how to fight that. And learning how to, because those who know their God will do exploits. Is that true? Come on. And I don't know if you know, I don't have a, I, my picture of Jesus is not some person that's needing medicating because of the anxiety that he has. Is that your picture of Jesus? Oh, my, my picture of Jesus is someone that's pretty cheeky. 
Like you understand, this guy can walk on water. This guy, this guy, this guy could take us all to McDonald's. He could take us all to McDonald's and just buy one Happy Meal. Is that true? There's not one sickness that he couldn't heal, not one person he couldn't deliver. Does that, does that, can you see, he was, every, every encounter that he has with a person, I just see him seeing the opportunity of this person to have an interaction with God. Come on. And see, the world's trying to tell us that Christians are these sour puss, cranky, irritable, no fun type of people. And that's actually the reverse of who we are. Is that true? Like, the God, like I said, Romans chapter 14, verse 13, that the God of all hope is who we serve. Is that true? Amen. Paul says, I pray that the God of hope fill you to overflowing Amen. with hope and joy in believing. In other words, let me say this. The lies will make you sad, but the truth will fill you with hope and joy. Amen. You've got to fight for this. You almost got to fight for your joy. You've got to fight for your sanity. You've got to... Fight for your promises in God. Is that true? Do you think you're just going to, all those prophetic words that I've given out already, you think you're just going to get that? I'll tell you what, you probably got, you'll get, from tonight you'll get about 65%. The other 35% is up to you to fight for it. It's conditional. So I've kind of given you the head start, like, woof, come on, there it is, go for it. But you're going to fight your way to it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Whoa. All right. So, who are the pastors here, Pastor? You want to come up and point them out? Just dob them in. There's a few of them, hey? I'll just, if they, okay, stand up. If 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 you lead a church or a ministry, I want you to stand up. There's no one here. Okay, that's cool. So, oh, there, boom, there they go. You're not sure. Are you sure you're a pastor? If you can help me, Jesus. Here we go. You're there, you're there, you're there, you're there. I feel like there's someone else. There he is. Boom. <laughs> yeah, I have a superpower, hey. You should see my, my family is, can never lie to me. Well, Father, well, okay. I was just, I'm just wondering what to do. Well, one thing I want to do is a big corporate one. Is it, can I have a big word for you all? And then, and then we do individual ones. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. Is this that I see your vision and your, and your ability to discern and see getting an upgrade. Your ability to see and discern what God is saying to you, what God is doing. You're going to discern it like you've never seen it. Never understood it like never before. It'll be like the lights have turned on. You kind of have an idea what's going on, but now you're going to really know what's going on. Brother up the back here, it's like there's so many things are puzzling you right now, but now you're going to get clarity. You're going to start to get answers. And actually God's going to see that, you know what, the motive of your heart is right. And many people are trying to question you and you've even questioned your own self. But let me tell you something. You are called. Come on. And you've got to settle that. See, when you fight for yourself, you've got to know that you're called. Like, you know, I get emails and all sorts of stuff complaining about whatever I do. And it's like, well, that's funny. Not that I try to be rude, but like, oh, I don't have to prove that I'm called. Is that true? Come on, and you're going you're gonna to step into a new confidence. And I can see the next step. You need to take another step forward in your ministry. You take another step of faith. It's, no more, it's not time for you to be safe. Come on, you've got to get out on that. It's like it's almost like you're stepping out onto the field. It's like you've studied the game. You know how it's meant to be done. You've got a strategy. You've got to actually get, you've actually got to apply the strategy and the thing that God has spoken to you in Jesus' name. Amen. What's your name, brother? Sam? Father, I bless Sam. Father, I pray you, like, like Bishop Joseph. <laughs> Press down, shake it together. Bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. This really handsome man here, you know what? You know what? You are so pastoral. You care and you love. You love people. Is this your family? 
Is this your girlfriend with you? <laughs> you should marry her, hey, she's very good. Mm -hmm. Oh, you will, that's good. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of, uh, is this, is this, I see this agreement between the two of you being very, very powerful. Not in a controlling way, but darling, you're going to understand. I think, uh, you know, it's together you've gotten this far. And together you're going to do even further. But you have this big heart, and I can see God enlarging your heart to a, a greater level of being able to sort of, you're very pastoral and you care, you so care. You know, you've, you've carried so much pain for people and you, it's almost like you see how they're going to blow up and you almost want to blow up yourself so that they don't have to go through that. Do you know what I mean? But, and, it's, and it's that that drives you and it's that, that that's the, the love that compels you is your call. As you know, if I love and it's like I see you praying and you pray and you pray and you believe God. You know what? And you love, Pastor, never fails. You've not failed, you have not failed, and you will not fail, and you're not going to fail in Jesus' name. You hear me, go? You're not failing, you're not failing, you're not failing, you're not failing, you haven't failed in Jesus' name. Love. If I love, I don't fail. Come on. There's been so many times you could have got angry, so many times you could have lost your temper, so many times you could have gotten bitter, but you have not. He's a good man, isn't he? Oh, Shandaraba. Father, what's your name, Pastor? Lenny? Am I saying it right? And? Jenny. Oh, Tina. Oh, mm. Mm. So, Father, I bless them in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray their capacity to increase, them to go forward. I see this new harvest coming to you, a new harvest coming, a new harvest coming in Jesus' name. Oh in the front so that I can see it. Oh, man. It's also, I saw you before, you know, and you have a gift of faith. There's a faith in you to just stand. There's a faith in you to just stand and to not waver. Having done all, to stand. Ha <laughs> ha. Come on. You've done all. You've got your territory. God's aligned the place in pleasant places. Where you are, I'm not saying that's not going to increase, but where you are is where you're meant to be. You must understand that. And there's a, you're about to actually, not transition, but there's something, you're building a legacy. You're building an, something that's going to go into the future. In Jesus' name. You know, I don't know where your kids are at, but there's going to be, there's going to be, God's going to restore things. God's going to bring things back. And you're going to see your sons and your daughters and your grandchildren preach the gospel in Jesus' name. Because you've stood, Pastor, because you've stood and you've just hung on to God for all your worth. Amen? And even though there's been many things tried to destroy you, God is with you. And I can see that with you. You have a gift of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I feel like God is on your hands. And the things that you're about to touch and the things that you're about to engage in are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. You know, whatever you put your hand to, you know, it's so even at your age and stuff, it's easy to take it easy. But now God is saying, do it with all your might. Do it with all your might. Come on. You know how to do this now. Come on. You know how to do ministry. You know this thing. Do it with all your might. It's time to wind up, not wind down. It's time to really, come on, let's press in and make this thing awesome. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Bless you. Pastor. Well, there's no ugly pastors in this room, hey. <laughs> Making the difference, aren't it, hey? Have you got your girl with you? Is she with you? Oh, there you are. Come on. This is the brains there. Man, you are very smart, darling. I know it's the glasses, but I just get this. <laughs> but God has spoken to you. The promise is still true. It's yes and amen in Jesus' name. I feel like you're just being restored. A few of you, like, it's, church has been difficult for the last three years, believe me. And God is still moving things around. And, but, but you're not moving. That's like I get this. It's like, you're not moving. God has established you. And he's just going to show you, it's just going to be in a little while. In a, in a, it's like another season. And then boom. 
You know, it's kind of like it's, you're in, you, it's like winter and autumn is going to come, but then it's going to be, oh, sorry, it's winter, then spring is going to start, and you're going to think, oh, wow, this is it. That's not it. Summer is coming. There is a summer coming that is going to be just as long and longer than the winter that year. God is restoring a family too. There's things going on there and God is restoring that in Jesus' name. Come on. And also see God giving you a car or something like that, a vehicle, whether you need one. Do you need one, darling, or he needs one? I don't know. You can have one in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Joseph will show you how to buy it or something. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Yeah, make sure he prays for you at the end of this meeting. Amen. Bless you. Have a seat. Have a seat. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Who's enjoying this? Is this okay? Is this not taking too long? You all want one, hey? In Jesus' name. Well, I'll, I'll be quick and then, okay. Oh, you got a bit, the blessing thing. The other thing is that you are both a real mum and dad in the kingdom. Hey, darling, you are a real father in the kingdom. True. And it's like this. You have this patriarchal blessing and what you name people, they become. Do you know? They, they, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> And, and again, as you start to, the wisdom and the downloads and the stuff that happens, I can see younger ministers coming to you, a network and all sorts of things. All that's going on around you is still got to keep going, still going to keep everything. You're never going to retire. It's not going to happen. He's not going to retire, okay? Just giving you a heads up. But it's going to be fun, okay? It's going to be life-giving. But I can really see you kind of adopting a few more. I see like, I, I kind of get three couples coming in to really bear the weight with you in Jesus' name. They're not with you yet, you know, but they're going to come in and help you grow this thing to the next level in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, darling. What's your, what's your name? Katie. 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 I'm just, sometimes a name triggers something in it. It's like there's this, there's also this royal thing. I don't know if there's royalty in your bloodline or it's Jesus, yeah. But there's kind of like there's this royal thing over you both, this ability to rule, not lead, but rule in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Bless them in Jesus' name. Here's this great fun couple. I can hear you singing at me when I was standing there. And um, with, oh, you're with Joseph. You're with him. Oh, you're the, oh, okay, we need one, two more like you. We need two more like you. And you're going to multiply yourselves. And you can see the richness. You're about to know richness in your own heart, in your own emotions, in your own thoughts, in your own marriage, in your own kids. It's like you're going to become so enviable that people, it's just like people want to get saved and they want to, they want to, they want to have the Christianity that you have. That's what's going to start to happen because of the joy and the unity and the faith and the miracles. And I tell you, you're going to see the miraculous around you. Come on, we need to see news, we need to see the miraculous. Amen. I was only thinking the other night, I was thinking, you know what, Father? I need to be able to turn water into petrol. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> Who wants that? Yes, please. <laughs> but that sort of creative miracles are going to come around you too. Amen. Get ready. It's just going to sort of pop. In front of you, and, it's, and, and it, it will literally be, and as you go for that, it's going to be the miraculous, and it's going to be funny because it'll just sort of happen to you. It won't be, it'll be like this grace on your life, the unmerited favor for miracles in Jesus' name. Everybody else, a lot of people want to go for what they do, and they'll get what you have, but they'll have to work and sort of train for it and go after it. You'll just sort of stumble into it because you've kind of got the genetic makeup spiritually there's a frequency uh, freak, do you, understand? you know like there's a frequency in your prayers in the way you operate that both operate that attracts the miraculous in jesus name amen pastor bless you amen pastor it's like this it's like your feet are shod i see the gospel wherever you go you share jesus you show jesus wherever you go man 
Come on. And when you lay hands on people, it's like, God, when you lay hands on people, you pray for people, but there's something supernatural about you laying hands on. I see God changing. You're like, people, people broke protocol in order to get their kids to where Jesus could lay their hands on them because they knew, they knew that if they could get them to him, if he blessed them, if he touched them, the woman with the issue of blood, true? Anybody that could just touch the hem of each other was boom. You know what, Peter, this will be a few times. Imagine Peter's shadow would heal people, Pastor. Come on. You're like a little, like, zapper. So you can have this line. You can have this thing at the end of this service. Anybody needs a zap? It's you. Because you're going to be able to impart. Like, you've, it's kind of, you've... you've and, and sometimes you even come to meetings like this to get an impartation and you've been so hungry, but now it's your turn to, you've got to understand it's your, you've been hungering after the right thing because it's what you've been hungering after. He gives you the desires of your heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, Pastor, and that, do you want to, you want to, oh, you're, you're going to heal the sick, hey? What about boldness? Can you do that? Anna? Yeah. Is this, I, I just want to really, you know what? I believe that all that's in your heart and even what you've shared with me about, you know, the cities and the places, I believe that. And I wanted to say it publicly and declare it over you that there's, there's an apostolic anointing on you. I think you already probably understand that. Who, who can see that? That's not really prophetic, is it? That's just kind of try hard, kind of the obvious. But I think you're going to grow into it. I think if you just will settle on it and just decide, okay, this is what I've got to do. And being an apostle is the least. Do you know what I mean? It's having to just do the, the hard yards for someone else to come and to break the ground and to fight for a city. And I tell you what, God's going to put cities on your heart all over the world that you're going to, even your prayers will make a difference. You know, you know what you were talking about? It was funny what you said. I, I know this, as a prophet, people start prophesying them over themselves when they're with me. I just sit there and go, this is the funniest thing ever. You know how you talk about the old man praying? It's literally like that. I, think, I see you teleporting to cities this is freaking you out. Who knows? This is the edge, eh? This is my world of prophetic angels and people teleporting. Anyway, who's freaking out? I was good until it got weird, hey? But who knows Philip teleported? Come on, he did, didn't he? And it's like, you're going to do stuff like that. You're going to go to another city and literally stand in the square of a city and command it, declare it to be a place for Jesus. You're going to go places and do things. I think even if, even if you just go there, brother, I pray that Lord that you, that pastors, his passport to be stamped. That's what I see. I see your passport, both of your passports being filled and filled. You have to give it the, I don't know if you can know, you can get the big fat ones. You can get the big fat ones. You need to buy a big fat one because of all the stamps. If you travel a lot, they just, your passport runs out and you're going to need one of those ones. It's going to be all over the world. It's just going to go. But wherever you put your feet, wherever you put your feet, a church could be planted. Even if you don't get to do it. But as God has given you this ability to just like put a stake in the ground and go, there's going to be a church here that will make the gospel and it's going to bring this to them. Whether I bring it about, and you're going to be real humble about it. You're going to, whether I bring it or someone else bring it. As long as, there, as long as there's a testimony of Jesus in this city. Amen. Come on, Pastor. You're going to zap. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Have a seat. This girl here, this here, darling, what's your name? Muffy. Muffy. That's actually your name. That's so cute. <laughs> Is your husband here? Is it? Should he be? He should be, shouldn't he? I don't want to embarrass you, darling. But he's coming. I tell you what, you know what? There is something over your life. There, okay, we're going weird anyway, so I'll just go weird. So it's like this. You actually have angels at your charge. You actually have angels that are willing to do whatever you want. You actually have them there. It's almost like they so enjoy what you do. They're like, please tell us what to do. 
please, they just love your heart and they are barracking for you and they, but they want an assignment. So let's get the husband, hey. Men, I think we went all the way around because the word is that God is supernaturally working behind the scenes in places that you do not see spiritually getting him. And he's going to get full of joy and all of that stuff's going to come back and you wait and see in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you've got, if you got a glasses on, if you've got glasses or you've got, even if you're wearing them like the Bogan Tiara, you know, you've got them on your hair like that. If you've got glasses, I want you to stand to your feet. Got glasses if you're wearing them. Okay, people are stealing glasses. Yeah, grabbing glasses. People are holding them. Bottles. feel like prophetically that people are going to start, you're going to start to um, operate in an area prophetically like you've never done before. You're going to see. You're going to see. One of the great things about being born again, Jesus says you'll never see the kingdom unless you're born again. Is that true? You're going to see better than you've ever seen before in Jesus' name. Now, I have a seat. I, this, I've got to do it on mass. Is that cool? All the mums. Mums, you don't know if you've had a baby or not? Like, it's like, <laughs> heavens and moon, like, mate, far out. Mm. Not sure. I'm like, you're not a mum, mum. Oh, come on. Oh, that's, that's a stand. That's it. I like that. I like that. Father, I pray right now. There's going to be this sweetness come onto you, all your lives, girls. I see sweetness. Not that you're bitter or anything like that, but, like, but it's been tough. And now God is going to bring some sweetness and some reward to you and some goodness. And you're going to have some joy. And you're going to see things turn around for you in Jesus' name. Things are going to all turn around for you. That pretty girl with the expensive jewelry, you must have a rich husband. Yeah. <laughs> But you, darling, things are going to turn around. You don't have to worry. You don't have to turn around. And the lady up here in the corner is kind of, yeah, yeah, really sort of movie star. You look like, you're not a movie star, are you? <laughs> you wish. Yeah. It's like this, darling. I can see the very, even what was in your heart right then, God is working on. Is that cool? He's working on it in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. But there's going to be sweetness over your life in Jesus' name. The two blonde girls, two blonde girls in this room, that's funny. <laughs> oh, I thought it was funny. I didn't mean to be offensive. <laughs> Is this, that both of you got a, you've actually both got a ministry and a call on you. And during this scene, it seems like that. But you know what? Ministry, you know, like, it, it's just going to come to you, okay? You just got to, the word to you, you need to say yes. Just have a practice. Say Yes. Oh, you all. Yeah, yeah. Your husbands, did you hear that? They actually said. <laughs> Just say yes. Just say yes. And you're going to, it's not, it's, it's not whether you're an inadequate. It's not about that. It actually is going to be, it's God. It's God making room for you two girls, okay? It's amazing because church honor, like the Lord, the Lord truly is a father because he likes the girls better than the boys. The girls get special privilege. Who's got a sister? Who's a guy? Okay, none of you's got sisters? Where did you guys all come from? Okay, sit down, mums. That's cool. There's someone here and you've got something wrong with this hand. Who's here has got an injured left hand in your fingers? Who's that? I'm going to have to break some fingers. If I... Who's that? I know you're here. It's like, it's like here, or these fingers, you can't, sometimes it's hard to shut. Everybody's checking their hands. There he is, boom. <laughs> That's awesome, hey. Let me tell you something, guys. When, when God speaks to you about someone like this, it's going to happen. And God is really, it's not really about your hand. God has highlighted this. That was only to get you to stand up. 
Because you, my man, are a leader. But you're a rascal. (laughs) But you kind of know it. You kind of know that you're a leader. And you're hesitant to step up and take responsibility. Because you think it's going to shut down your life and you're not going to have any fun and you're going to have to respond. This is what you're born for. You are born to lead and it's going to be a business. And it's going to be powerful and it's going to be like an outreach and it's going to be like a ministry. It's going to be a church. I don't know what skill you've got. You've got some sort of skill. What's that? Other than like super good looking, you know. (laughs) What can you do? Now, what do you do? He's a what? You're a builder. That's a massive skill. See, you, come on. You are going to crack this. And you're kind of hesitant and you apologise. Listen to me. There's, you don't need to be apologised for being a success. Father, I break whatever that thing is that wants to make him small, whatever that thing is that wants to make him feel that he doesn't have it or he makes too many mistakes or he's fearful. Father, I just break fear of my dear brother. Jesus loves you. Man, Jesus has, Jesus has hands like you. you kind of got a sweet spot for him, hey. And you will succeed. So Father, I pray you heal the hand. But you're going to, I tell you, there's going to be a time where you work from here up. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go get Joseph to pray for you later and take it next level. Hey. Whose church are you in? Oh, you. Oh, see, there's legacy. There's things to happen. There's a generation. Like, you're part of something great. Come on. Is your wife here? Oh, you're the rich one. <laughs> this is your wife. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Go buy an expensive car or something. Hey, and just like, I can see it. You need to stand up. Oh, I just, I, I can see you kind of, you're still wrestling with it. I'll fight you. Hey, like I'm, I've done the, yeah. You, you, God wants to bless you. It's not wrong. You don't have to be hard. You think you've got to be ruthless and brutal to get ahead in it. No, nah, you just do the awesome work that you do. Look after people. Look after your team. Look after your staff. Look after your contractors. And God will bless you. Right now, like, like never before, we need integrity. We need good people employing people. Amen? Looking after people. You, you are going to... Let me tell you something, brother. You're going to be one of these guys. Let me, let me go get it. I want you to stand because my brother moves in this. My brother is a businessman. He once wanted to... He's in the golf industry. So he wanted to buy a golf range and do it, develop it. Okay, so he found a piece of land and he couldn't find a piece of land, but eventually, and I think this is going to be the sort of thing. So he, he, I'm buzzing. Do I need to move? Where's the sound guy? Am I okay? I'm okay. Okay, I could just feel it going weird. Is he couldn't find, he needed about four acres of land. Finds four acres of land, but it's contaminated. He puts in, it's going to cost $200,000 to fix the the land. So his tender is, give me $200,000 and I'll take it. And they did it. So he puts his DA in for the golf range. The golf people, the council says, oh, look, in in the long run he had to, what what happened? He had, council paid him another $200,000 to have water retention on it. And he got another two hundred ten off the electricity company because they put high voltage lines across the corner. So he had the block of land of four hundred thousand dollars. He hadn't done a thing. 
While he's out there praying in front of it going, God, this is miraculous. Like I've made this windfall. This is you. What do you want me to do? Right then a guy pulls up behind him in a car and says, gets out of the car. Peter thought he was lost. You are right, mate. No, I'm actually a pastor and you don't know who, I saw your truck here. Would you know who owns this land? He goes, I do. He goes, oh, we've, as a church, we've been praying for this block of land. My brother gave him the land and the $400,000. And that was when I needed a building. <laughs> you two are going to do stuff like that. You're going to be, you're going to, you're going to, you, you're going to, you're going to supply houses for people. You're going to buy, you're going to buy vans. You're going to, my brother, you want, oh, we need air conditioning. Boom. You want to be good. You look after him, eh? And you need to look after him. And you already do that, your honour, and you really get it. You really know how to prosper. Help him. That's why you're there. You're a team. Oh, I'm getting excited for you, brother. I know I made you stand. You don't like it, but that's why I'm fighting that insecurity thing. Hey. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Oh, man, I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah, okay. Bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Amen. Amen.